Welcome to Around the Blockchain. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Dave, welcome to Around the Blockchain. If you don't mind just giving the um, viewers a bit of an introduction as to who you are in the crypto space. Thanks, mate. Uh, my name's Dave. I'm the founder and the director of the Crypto Den, which is probably one of Australia's largest uh, crypto communities at the moment. Um, I started the Crypto Den in 2017. Um, basically, it uh, sort of started by chance, actually, because I was I was on social media and um, as, as you do, sharing ideas with trading and, and things like that. And in the hype of the 2017 bull run and everyone's going, everything's everything's going to the moon and all that. And um, I started sharing charts and then I found that people kept asking me questions both publicly and privately and, and asking what I thought on this and thought on that. And we get the question a million times a day now in, in the crypto then. Um, and from there, I thought, well, I can't keep doing this in PMs and private messages. So I started the Crypto Den as a group and it's just grown from there, basically. So, Yeah, it's massive now. You've got well over 40,000 members. So obviously that's a bit of a handful to manage. Yeah? It's good nuts. Wow. And yeah. what, did you, what did you start with? So obviously, you know, you started where everyone sort of starts at the, at the very beginning. Um, how many members did you sort of start with to, back in 2017? Just from nothing. Yeah, wow. Yeah. And it's grown over the last, so th what, three, four, coming up for four years, over yeah. 50,000 people. Wow. And so it's you guys... Almost five years now, yeah. Wow. And what, what draw you or drew you into crypto, Dave? Um, it was actually a post I've seen on, uh, on a Facebook group. I don't remember which one it was now. And it was someone saying, can, can someone tell me more about ant shares? I'm not sure if you've ever, ever heard of ant shares. And I thought, what the hell's an ant share? So I, I Googled it and that's uh, it sort of piqued my interest. Ant share is basically uh, what NEO used to be called. Mm. So that was the original NEO. And I thought this looks pretty promising, this stuff. And, and that got me researching Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general. I'd heard about Bitcoin before, but never really took much interest in it. Um, and then, yeah, I started I started Googling and researching NEO and, and that led me to Bitcoin and blockchain and um, ultimately Ethereum as well. And I just thought this, this is crazy stuff. Like this is some really good technology. And obviously from an investment standpoint, I, I stand to, to gain a lot here if, if I'm in early enough. And I did, I got into Ant shares and obviously went to NEO and, and NEO went quite high in price action and, and my journey began there basically. And were you like trading shares or stocks or anything like that before, Dave? Or what were you doing before? Only stocks. So I'd only just sort of, sort of really started to dip my toes in it. And my, I've always been really good with numbers. I'm mathematically inclined and so the numbers just talk to me. So my area of interest was mostly in the technical analysis side of things. So um, where, where in stock markets, you're more, that there's a lot of fundamental analysis. You're, you're basing your, your positions and your, your buys and your sells on the fundamental of a company, um, what they're doing, what they're producing, so on, what, what their quarterly incomes are and, and all that kind of stuff. Whereas trading for me, I, I love the numbers side of it. I, I'm, I was always more drawn to the technical side. Yeah. So that's where crypto is really good because in my opinion, cryptocurrency is very hard to value a company fundamentally or a coin fundamentally in crypto because they come and go so fast. Whereas you can, you know, really trade to their price action based based on what the coin is doing in the market. So, and it's just fact, it's figures, it's numbers, you, numbers don't lie, so. Yeah, and so for the viewers um, understanding, so uh, technical analysis, you guys use obviously different um, metrics and stuff like that to, you know, kind of formulate a bit of an opinion on where you think um, the price of, I guess, a different token or, or cryptocurrency is going to go. What sort of stuff are you looking at um, when you're sort of analyzing something like that? First and foremost, price action. So technical analysis isn't, isn't a crystal ball. It's not going to tell you where price is going to go. You're using laws of probabilities. So there's a, based on previous experience or past performance, um, this particular pattern in price action plays out, say, 77% of the time. So the probabilities are, if I play my cards right, it could play out into that 77% of that, of that particular pattern. 
Um, there's always going to be the risk of the 30%, yes, but we, we manage that risk by using things like stop losses and position sizing and, and that kind of stuff. So um, I'm, I'm more of a price action trader, so I use things like supports and resistance um, and Fibonacci levels, whereas uh, a lot of other traders, and I still use, use these, but a lot of other traders depend predominantly on, on chart patterns, things like falling wedges and uh, bull flags and all the, you know, they're, they're probably the two most common ones at the moment and they all work. They all work together. Um, it's just a difference in how the person views the market and, and then that goes into how the person trades the market. And what sort of um, factors go into, you know, determining someone's um, trading style? Like, have you noticed different trends where people that have like a certain personality will probably stick to um, trading like technically maybe the same way you do or um, someone with a different sort of personality type sort of moves to a different like technical analysis, um, I guess, sort of style? Like how, how does that all sort of fit in? I haven't really determined what type of personality or person chooses one over the other yet. But what I have noticed is a lot of people are definitely more drawn to pattern trading. So we've, we've just had 300, 300 students go through our trading course. And I would say a good 80 to 90% of them will, will go into pattern trading. I think that's, that's because they're far more obvious to recognize. So when you see a big triangle on your screen, it, it really stands out to you. Um, I started doing that. So I started trading using Elliott wave theory and, and patterns. And I've, I've sort of gone away from that because I see the market on more of a horizontal plane. And it, that's just pure price action that the figures are, are there. It's fact. And you can't sort of confuse that with anything. You can't mix it up with anything. It's um, that the patterns are still there and you know, I do still see them, but I don't rely heavily on those patterns. I, I rely heavily on key levels of price. And how did you sort of, I guess, evolve, um, evolve your, your trading style? Um, I think I just sort of realized that when, when I see a falling wedge, for example, and um, to me, what that is, is, is price has come, come up and then has had a controlled push down and it finds a certain level before it goes back up again. Now in a bull market, we call them retraces where they find a level and then they go up again. Um, and I just sort of thought to myself, well, it doesn't really matter if it's a wedge or a flag, it's still finding that level of price anyway. So it doesn't really matter to me what pattern it's forming, as long as it lands on that key level of price, then which we call support, uh, then, you know, the chances are, the probabilities are, is that the price is going to go up from there anyway. So to me, it was kind of like, it doesn't really matter what the pattern is. And I just got used to seeing the market on more of a horizontal plane. So I don't, I don't generally use patterns as, as much as what I used to. I'll still use them as forms of confirmation. So something we teach heavily is, uh, we call it your cake, right? You all the ingredients to your cake. And uh, it, it's just an ingredient to, to make that cake. So the more things, which is, is called confluence, the more things that sort of line up together at that same sort of level of price, um, the more confirmations that you have and the more that you have there to support that you think, yes, price is in fact going to go up. So uh, it's, it's just an ingredient to me. So I, I might use it as a way of confirmation, but generally speaking, I don't, I don't really draw patterns on my charts anymore. Yeah. And so obviously recently, um, you know, there's been quite a bit of hype in the media and stuff drawing people into, into crypto as well um, through the back of 2020 and obviously uh, through the early stages of 2021. You yep. were obviously around in 2017. Ha has there been sort of um, much of a difference, for, at least from your perspective, um, you know, going through 2017 till, till now or is there some similarities oh, yeah. and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, big time. So... The biggest thing is liquidity, market liquidity. So in 2017, I think um, that the market cap, I think oh, from memory was like $200 billion. Um, this time around, we've gone to $2 trillion. So there's a lot more money in the market. There's, there's a lot more liquidity, which from a technical standpoint, makes it so much easier to trade because you've got institutional investors now that are in traders that are now trading this market. They're trading using... Um, Sort of techniques that they've used in traditional markets so they're using those traditional techniques in crypto which 
as, as the big money moves the market, cryptocurrency is becoming easier to trade in the sense that it's respecting those traditional rules of technical analysis. So it's definitely come a long way in that sense. Do you guys, sorry, sorry, Dave, do you guys use any um, like form of, um, it's not really fundamental analysis, more so like, do you sort of also take into account um, like the different things that are happening in the media as well that might also sort of cause a bit of a fluctuation in price action? Not really. I mean, you hear all the, the Elon Musk crap and, and China being crypto. China bans crypto every year. So <laughs> It's, it's one of those things that I take with a grain of salt. Elon Musk invested $150 billion into Bitcoin. Um, in, you know, it, it's, cryptos has, I think Bitcoin on its own, sorry, was a $2 trillion market cap. He's yeah. not going to move the market with its weight. I, I just don't believe that. I think he could be a catalyst for small dumps and, and, and small pumps and things like that to, to FOMO people into small cap coins like Dogecoin. But when it comes to moving Bitcoin, there's a lot more money involved than, than just what Elon Musk has put in. So I don't, I don't fundamentally believe that he's the one that's going to be moving the market around and all that. So I try to stay away from the hype, to be perfectly honest. I don't really listen to any of the news. I, I really couldn't care who's, you know, what famous person is buying or selling Bitcoin. I see what I see on the charts. Um, my team and I, we, we shared with our, our students about two, maybe even three weeks before the, the price actually dropped that we're seeing some bearish indicators here that could indicate that Bitcoin's reaching the top. Um, and we were pretty dang long. So we, we nailed that pretty, pretty closely. And that was, th those signs were there long before Elon Musk tweaked anything, you know? So I, I, that's why I don't trade on fundamentals in cryptocurrency because I just don't think that they do anything. The one thing I will look at on a fundamental level is tokenomics. So if a new, if a new token is is listed somewhere and the supply of the coin is out, outrageous, you know, in the trillions, then you've got to look at that and go, well, the chances, if you understand anything about market cap, the chances of it going to a dollar like everyone keeps yelling about are very, very slim. Um, the, the latest hype coin that everyone jumped on was SHIB and it's all, it's all because they can buy hundreds of millions of them. And I think on some kind of psychological level, people think I've got hundreds of millions of this stuff, which means one day I'm going to be rich. But the supply is infinite. You know, um, it, it doesn't it doesn't make sense. So, I think for people that are investing, they really need to look at it, the very minimum, the tokenomics, the metrics of the tokens, what what the supply is and the circulating supply, um, and then from there they can they can sort of more look on a technical standpoint. But I don't I don't invest in cryptocurrency except for Bitcoin and Ethereum. So I have my holdings in Bitcoin and I have my holdings in Ethereum and that is it. I don't, I don't hold anything else. Um, everything else I just trade. So I'll trade all the, all the crappy coins that people rave on about and I'll ride those, those hype waves. But that's as, as much as I do on those sort of coins. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With you and your team, so um, obviously before the you know, China FUD, the Elon FUD, all that sort of stuff happened, um, you said you sort of predicted it about two or three weeks out. What, what were you guys looking at um, to sort of get such an accurate um, reading on what was going to happen and what the market was going to do? Well, oh, first of all, I don't like to call them predictions. Um, I think that's, that's naive if you think you predict anything perfectly. I think if, you, if you're saying that it's showing signs, then, you know, you should, should really consider those, those signs. And have an exit plan basically have an exit strategy just in case that that it does play out because like i said before it's you, you're playing the probabilities here so basically the main thing we were looking at is each each time bitcoin had a push um up in price action the pushes were getting smaller uh, and that was also displaying a lot of bearish divergence when you're comparing it to the relative strength index on the charts as well so um and, and the cci in the charts but that was the first, the first sign was that those pushes were getting smaller, which that essentially tells us that it's buyer exhaustion. You know, the buyers are running out. The people are, are starting to pull back a little bit and they're not buying into Bitcoin as much as what they were in the previous two pumps before that. Um, so that's, that's buyer exhaustion in conjunction with um, bearish divergence on a relative strength index. So that was the first, the first sign that we started to look at. After that, in price action, it was purely a horizontal plane where Bitcoin failed to create a higher high in price point. And after that, 
on a, on a daily chart, that's when we said, yeah, this is definitely a reversal. So. Yeah, okay. And so um, I guess what are some other sort of key indicators that, you know, just the average everyday trader can, can kind of look at to get a bit of a, an understanding of where the market could be going. Like personally, I've, I've just done um, or completed your course as well, um, yeah, which awesome. I'm finding really interesting. Like I don't come from a technical trader background. However, I do enjoy maths. Um, and most of my, my background has been like you've kind of just mentioned um, yourself is mostly in investing. So same, same deal. I actually hold um, both Bitcoin and Ethereum as well. And I've started to try and look at um, getting better and, and branching out into sort of, you know, that technical analysis, um, day trading yeah. sort of aspect of things. But what are some basic things that I guess, um, you know, pretty newcomers can, can sort of start to look at to, I guess, be a little bit more successful um, in this space? My first piece of advice is don't chase pumps. Um, that, that's the, in a group of 50,000 people that I've been running for nearly five years, the, the biggest thing that I see a lot of is, is every time a, a meme coin or an altcoin really has this great big pump, everyone's raving about it. It's, it's the new sliced bread. Everyone loves it and they're all buying it. And what they don't understand is someone at some point is going to sell a lot of that and they're going to cash in their profits and you're going to be left sitting there holding bags of this crap that, you know, pe people in, in 2017 were buying TRX for 30 cents. Uh, I haven't looked at TRX in God knows how long, but has it even hit 10 cents again in this bull run? I, I'm not, I don't think it has. Um, so those guys that bought at 30 cents are still holding that stuff. It's still worth nothing. You know, they've lost a lot of money. So that's my first piece of advice is never ever buy a coin that has just had a pump ever. There's always a retrace. The market always comes back to a point of equilibrium and it starts again. Uh, so be patient and wait for that to happen if you do want to invest in that particular asset. The second thing is at a bare minimum, if you want to start to understand charts or how to look at them or how to read them, um, is to learn A, what a candlestick is, because that's important, and, and B, what support and resistance is. And support and resistance is the building blocks for everything else. Yeah, awesome. Um, where where would you sort of say that we are within the current sort of bull cycle? You know, we have a lot of people going, um, yeah, this this current cycle is over now. We've we've sort of finished um, the the bull cycle we've currently been in. I've got a lot of people saying that no, we're not. We've you know, obviously, this is just a natural natural occurrence, um, especially within the crypto space. This happens every bull run, um, there's, you know, 30, 40, 50% sort of retracements. Um, so where would you personally sort of, without making a prediction, but where do you sort of, where, where does your opinion lie on, I guess, where we're at in the current sort of bull cycle? I think the biggest difference between this particular dump that's just happened and previous ones in bull runs is, is Bitcoin generally does pull back 30%, but uh, I think this time it's, it's really pulled back at 50% retracement, which is quite a big pullback um, in one go. I'm a little bit on the fence. So as a trader, I generally don't really look any more than, you know, a few weeks ahead, you know, because you've got to sort of be fluid and, and go with the market. If the market's trending up, we're, as traders, we're, we're buying or we're longing. If the market's going down, we're selling or we're shorting. So it, either way, by shorting, we, we can make money in a bear market. We can make money as price moves down just as easy as we can if price moves up. So I really couldn't care if Bitcoin went to three grand tomorrow. <laughs> like it really doesn't make a difference to me um, from a trading standpoint. From an investing standpoint, that that has hurt a lot of people, but it also makes a lot of people happy because we could also definitely be buying three thousand dollar Bitcoin again. <laughs> um, in saying that, from a technical standpoint, I do think it is possible that Bitcoin tests twenty thousand dollars as a, a key level of support because we're going back to previous all time high at the peak of a bull market. And generally speaking, the markets do like to retest these, these types of levels. And with the volatility of Bitcoin, we've just seen $30,000 wiped off its price, which is enormous. Um, there, there's no reason at all to me that Bitcoin can't, can't hit $20,000 over the next month even. Um, in saying that, um, that doesn't make the bull run over. You know, it, it could just be that that first really big pullback that we have 
um, before another push up. You know, this could be that first pullback before before Bitcoin hits two hundred thousand dollars in price. Um, I don't see it as as a bear market as such. If Bitcoin were to go below twenty thousand dollars, I'd definitely start considering that it's it's over for a little while and it could it could take another twelve to 24 months for it to turn around and, and it could consolidate sideways for a little bit. Um, but I think if it hits $20,000 as a bit of a test and, and then shows some pretty strong price action from there and, and has a bit of a pump from there, then I'd, I'd expect another pretty big leg up as well. But it, it'd have to do a lot of work because it'd have to get back above $60,000 to to really confirm a, a big bull market's coming. So yeah, I think temporarily we're definitely bearish. But long term, Bitcoin is always going to be bullish. Yeah. What are some of the key levels that you're looking at there? Obviously, so you mentioned um, twenty thousand dollars as possibly, you know, if Bitcoin was to sort of test that again, um, and then obviously go down back down past that, that would sort of start to indicate um, that we're probably in a bit of a bearish market. Um, but what are some uh, like key price levels that where that you're kind of watching pretty closely now? Um, Bitcoin seems to have been trending sideways for. You know, maybe the last seven to ten days within maybe like a thirty-three to thirty-seven yeah. and a half thousand dollar range. What sort of price levels are you guys looking at there? I'd expect at least a thirty thousand dollar test again. I'd really expect to see that. Um, it's it it's really not showing a lot of strength, to be perfectly honest. Bitcoin, when it does bounce back, it usually bounces back pretty hard and pretty fast. Uh, it's not really showing that to me just yet. I think sellers are still very much in control of the market at the moment, and my my opinion is that if if we do come down to that thirty thousand dollar mark again, there's a high probability that that level of support will likely break and see twenty five to twenty six thousand. And if that happens, I think that's when fear will kick in. And from a, a technical standpoint, that might be the key level that it should hit. But then you're going to have the emotion of the market coming to play with where all that fear and everyone's going to start selling out, which that would then send the price to. To that twenty thousand dollar level, so um, it's definitely um, a high probability of that happening. So, but we are at that point at the moment where it really is 50-50. and you, you see guys say that all the time, fifty fifty. You know, where a, a big pattern that we're looking at at the moment is a, is a huge symmetrical triangle after a downtrend, and you know that that can be seen as a very very bearish indicator. Um, with a 70-30 split. So a 70% chance of it continuing and then a 30% chance of it turning around and coming back up. That's just a statistic based on that, that pattern that has been used in traditional markets for decades. So we really are at that point where it's, it's a decision time and we could see a, a small pump that, that takes us back up temporarily. Um, but I just, at the moment, I, I feel that we, we're gonna see further downside. I hope I'm wrong for the sake of investors, um, but I think that is what's going to happen. And to me personally, like I said, I, it doesn't make a difference to me. I'll trade the market up and I'll trade the market down. So, yeah, for investors' sake, I hope I'm wrong, but I think it's going down. With the recent price action as well, so obviously, you know, the high that we sort of reached was about sixty-five thousand um, US dollars, and then, you know over the course of a pretty short period of time, we're back down towards, you know, that mid sort of 30K K range. Um, and then also, you know, very recently as well, a couple of weeks ago, when all of this price action started to happen, you would see really, really quite big red candles and, and the price of Bitcoin dropped significantly very fast. What, what sort of happened um, in that situation there, just from a, a trader's point of view? Well, the guys that are moving the market are seeing the same indicators we're seeing. So that they're in control of the market. People with the big money are creating these indicators. So essentially they, they've seen a, a lower high form and, and confirm. So they've, they've said to themselves the same thing we said, this market's going down, we're gonna see. So they start to sell off really big positions. And what happens is when these big guys start selling off big positions, a lot of people get very, very scared and then they start doing it. And then you get things like stop losses being hit to people that have, that have set stop losses to protect their capital and they get hit all the way down. And essentially a stop loss is, is an automated selling point. So somebody puts in a stop loss and it says that when price hits that point, my account is going to sell out my position. Now, if you've got 
a million stop losses being hit over and over and over again. That, and that's constantly people selling. So the selling pressure is so high that the market just keeps dropping and dropping and dropping until it gets to a point where it's cleared the stop losses, the buyers are coming in, it'll, it'll create a little bit of a, 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 a lull in the market, a bit of a sideways movement before then the traders go, yep, yeah, we're still going down. So then they, the smart money starts selling off again, which creates the same effect. Um, and we also sort of saw, um, oh, sorry, I did hear a couple of people talk about um, a lot of leverage um, being used in the market. Maybe the market was potentially over leveraged. What are your thoughts around those sort of comments there as well? Yeah, I think so. I, a lot of people along on, on Bitcoin, you know, um, th there's a lot of rumors that even exchanges themselves are, are manipulating the markets, which isn't out of the question. You know, they're, they're the ones that are holding all the data. They know how many people are along and, and things like that. And ultimately, I think they they could play a bit of a silly bugger game and, and do whatever they want, really. But um, I think it definitely was over leveraged. People were long when they really shouldn't have been. The, the signs were there. The signs to start looking for shorts or to start selling out of positions were there. And people were just so swept up in, in the bull market that, oh, we've hit 60,000, we're definitely hitting 80,000. And then we're going to 160,000. And people don't tend to consider these pullbacks. These, these pullbacks are healthy, they, they need to happen. And you can't just keep going up forever. So, yeah. And then you've got the FUD, of course, of, Elon Musk and China banning crypto and India banning crypto and, and all that kind of stuff and it, it, it creates fear in, in in the in the markets and and within investors as well so you know it it all sort of comes together to to make the price go down I suppose yeah kind of a bit a bit like a, a perfect storm I guess look yeah long term that's not an accident that's what sorry that's not an accident so I, something I say to people is if, if, if you were Elon Musk and you've invested $150 billion into something, um, you're probably going to have analysts watching that market for you, aren't you? If you're not doing it yourself, you're going to have people watching it for you. Now, if those analysts three weeks ago or three weeks before the big drop said to Elon, hey, it's not looking great, uh, we should probably scale out of some positions here, they start doing that and then, and then Elon goes, Hey everyone, um, Bitcoin's not good for the environment. You know, it's everything's timed pretty well. Everything's by design. No, nothing that happens is an accident. So. Yeah, abs absolutely. I totally agree with that as well. Um, long term, where do you sort of see all of this going? Where do you see, you know, Bitcoin's price action? Where do you see um, investors sort of putting their money? Do you sort of think people are going to, you know, continue to use Bitcoin, um, you know, as as bit of as like an traditional asset where they try and you know store some value or um, what do you sort of see happening in the space over you know the next say two three four five years well i think bitcoin every time it halves it's always going to go up in price because it becomes more scarce the scarcity first and foremost is is creating an enormous amount of value for bitcoin um, so that's that's not going to change i think a lot of the altcoins that exist will disappear as a lot smarter money comes into the market um, and I think that it will more go to the way of the technology and what the technology can do, as opposed to just the currency and, and people making money off sick meme coins. Um, I think a lot of it, a lot of the technology will become more recognized. There's a lot of people out there that are building some really cool things on blockchain technology that the world hasn't even heard of yet. So those, those companies will, I think will survive and if they do have their own currency within it and they will they'll do quite well um and but but ultimately bitcoin will will always be around it will always be king it'll, it'll always be a store of value i mean it's it's the one asset apart from usd that is traded against with every single altcoin so on every single exchange you know you're not going to have every single exchange enable you to trade your um, your polka dot coin against ADA, for example, you know, it's, all, it's not, that's not how it works. Everything's against Bitcoin or it's against, you know, um, Litecoin, even Ethereum, that the big cap coins like that. But you look at the market share Bitcoin has, it's not going anywhere. You know, the Bitcoin dominance has dropped recently and, and given some altcoins a bit of room to breathe and, and room to move, but 
that happened in the last bull run too. And altcoins ultimately dropped 99%. So quite a lot of them, if not all of them. So uh, I think Bitcoin will always be king. And I do see Bitcoin going to 200,000, 400,000, maybe even a million dollars one day. It's the growth of it, I think is immeasurable at the moment. No as it, sorry, as an investor, I, I really like hearing hearing somebody say that. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, mathematically, it gets more scarce every four years. And we've seen historically that every time there is a halving, the, the price grows exponentially. And there's no reason to think that that's going to stop every, every time it halves. So I think that the final halving is, you know, 100 years from now or something something crazy like that so um we'll be long gone by the time it reaches its full potential so. <laughs> yeah absolutely what's next for the crypto den dave um so we've got our, our trading courses at the moment so we've got our, our new one that launches on 5th of july and um so that's that's pretty exciting that'll be our third course that we're running and, and the first two have been really really successful we've created some amazing traders already and you know the, the course runs for six weeks and you know for me personally i taught myself how to trade I, I did my own research i didn't do any courses i just learned and applied myself and it took me years um, we're teaching this stuff in six weeks and usually by week four and five our students are, are making two three four hundred percent trades and they're starting from from nothing so it's, it's really cool to see that that change in such a short period of time for people and, and really see that understanding. All of our lessons are live, as you know. So we get to see and hear those moments where people go, oh, I finally understand this. And they're our favorites. They're our favorite moments. Um, so we, we love that. And then I'm hoping that in the next week or so, we'll be launching the trade room. Now the trade room is more for people that already know how to trade so it's not really for beginners it gives it gives a place for traders like myself and uh, our students that have, have come out of the course as traders and other traders around the world not just in australia to sort of be a part of a space where we're all sharing trade ideas together so we're sharing the trades that we're entering so for example i'll say hey i'm entering this particular trade this is this is where i'm entering this is this is where, you know, I see this going and this is my opinion. And it is an opinion based um, website. It's not a signal website. We don't, we don't tell people to buy. It's not, we're not uh, that way inclined. We're about education. So I'll say to someone, I'm getting into this position at this price and this is my reason why. And it's a way to educate people and further that education for our students. Um, but also it gives people trading ideas. So for example, if, if you were to put up a chart yourself as, as one of the students that have gone through our course and you put up a chart and it's on a coin that I would never really look at. Um, Doge, for example, I hate Dogecoin. <laughs> um, everyone knows I hate Dogecoin. <laughs> but if you were to put up a chart and it's a chart that I would never really look at and I looked at your chart and thought to myself, that actually does it pretty good. I'll then go to my own chart, confirm what you're looking at and I might enter that position. Now, I, I wouldn't have entered that position had I have not seen your chart. So it helps keep keep people's fingers on the pulse in the market and, and sharing those trading ideas, which is really, really exciting. So we, we've worked really hard on the trade room and, and it's hopefully coming in the next week, which that's is really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. How do you- And we also have a new mobile phone app being released for our course students as well. Wow. How do you find time to um to still trade yourself, Dave? Obviously, you're super busy with you know facilitating this. Yeah. So many uh, students as well. I, I haven't actually had a lot of time to trade myself lately, and um I, I still trade as much as I possibly can. But sometimes I'll go two or three days and I, I won't even place a single trade, um, which is fine. The market's always going to be there, you know. Um, everyone sort of jokes and calls me a vampire because I don't really sleep anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, once all the things that I'm, I'm trying to put together and, and build for people is, is built, then I can sort of relax a little more and, and, you know, start trading more for myself. And the thing that people don't understand is trading as a job or a source of income or a business, it's actually quite a lonely job. 
because you are sitting at your home or at your office and you are by yourself and everything's in your head. You're not talking to anybody. You're not communicating. It's quite lonely. Um, the trade room solves that. It gives people a place to trade together online. That's awesome. Dave, look, um, I won't keep you much longer. I know you're a busy man. Have you got any sort of closing thoughts for, um, for the audience? Um, not exactly. I think my, my first piece of advice I gave earlier is the, the biggest thing that I see in this market is, is please don't chase big pumps. Don't just stay away from the hype coins. Stay away from the big YouTube stars that think they know everything, <laughs> the big Twitter accounts and all that kind of stuff. Just block out the noise. Uh, educate yourself, be it through through your own means or if you find someone that, like myself that is, is selling a great course with, with good structure and content, um, educate yourself as much as possible, even if it's through your own research before investing any money because if you don't, the chances of you losing that money are quite high and I see it every day. Um, the, amount of, the amount of messages, the private messages that I get from people asking me for help and for advice and all this sort of stuff is it would blow your mind. Uh, 100 messages a day sometimes. So, wow. you know, that, it happens a lot. And I, I've heard every story you can think of and 99% and of it comes to people chasing pumps. So that's my biggest advice to everyone is, is don't chase pumps and educate yourself. Awesome, Dave. Look, thanks so much for your time. I appreciate it. I know you're a busy man. So no worries, thank you for jumping on. That's right. Anytime, man. Awesome.